Hello, 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 New Mexico. My name is Eric Paul Rige. I am an artist based here in Gallup, New Mexico. Born here, grew up here, currently live here, will probably forever be here. New Mexico is my, my home and my calling, and I never want to leave. And so being in, invited uh, to share my work and my process and my inspirations and the beauty that sheds its light on my soul that I absorb and want to radiate through my hands and through making. Um, I was invited by Steve Heil, who was actually my elementary school art teacher. I think we met in 2003, 2003, 2004, um, as a student. And I remember one specific project that I did with Mr. Heil um, I was at my dining room table and we were creating houses out of paper. Um, I remember making a, a tree stump and like, um, cutting construction paper and making this tree and then this whole home. And so it's fitting that I'm literally making a home out of paper right now, which I will explain in a little bit. <laughs> And so things come full circle in that way, and it's how I view my practice in a lot of ways, and it's how I view life um, as cycles, as stories of, of birth and death and rebirth and redeath. Um, in terms of my process, I think of what I do as a mode of making, but then I also think of unmaking, remaking, destroying, undestroying, maybe? That's a new term that I just thought of, to undestroy something. But in my my beliefs as a maker, I've always encouraged and welcomed this whole cycle of uh, how my hands communicate material. And with that, um, there are stories to be told and multiple stories that exist within the same material. And so oftentimes after I create something, I will often uncreate it and then remake it and then unmake it and then recreate it. And so the work here in my studio, which is actually like my childhood home, um, one of my childhood homes that has now become my studio. I moved into this house in 2011 as a senior in high school and have had many lives as a young person in terms of personalities, interests, identities um, that all become this stew that I mix and add to and take away from time to time. And now waking up every day, seeing my history, not only as a person, but as an artist and a maker, um, look down on, not look down, um, look, look at me, be with me, support me. Yeah, look down at me because I have art on the ceiling. The art looks at, down at me when I wake up. <laughs> So it does look down on me, not look down on me in the, the negative connotation of that sense, but it's looking literally down at me, um, looking up at me. I have art on the floor, so it's always looking up at me. It's looking at me. I'm looking at it. I consider what I do living. I consider the objects that I make as um, entities that continually grow and continually change um, as we do. I feel like as we go throughout the world, um, our bodies are scarred, our bodies are scratched, our bodies are um, changed by our journey. And so I feel like within my practice, I celebrate those changes and I celebrate those scars. Um, going back to the idea of remaking, oftentimes when I perform with my work or I dance with my work, or I invite others to touch my work, um, new things happen. Um, I'll often adorn my body with different um, ashes and, and paints and dyes. And so as I'm wearing them, um, that becomes present within the work and it rubbing and having this physical contact with my skin, there becomes now a new a new relationship with each other because we're, we're physically attached to each other. And so 
I'm gonna edit this out. I guess I do have to edit this. Cause where am I going? Where am I? What do I want to say? Here, I can just stop. And so, I want to begin um, by introducing myself. Yat e she e er pariji neshia tachini neshle do beshpich ai e bashishchin aro kiani e dashiche do beshpich ai e dashinale akot ego dine neshle na nijoje de aisi nesha do kehasht e do nashnish do nashne yeah she is um that is who I am I am a fiber artist I am a weaver I consider all things that I make a weaving. I've developed this conceptual philosophy for myself that when there is a warp, there is a weft. And that in essence becomes a weaving. So as I share my story and as you share your story, we are now woven together. We are now, we have now created this tapestry of our relationship. And so I consider my practice a celebration of weaving, um, a study of what a weaving is, what weaving was, and what weaving can possibly be. As a weaver, I've come to celebrate the entire process of weaving um, from sheep, um, or spider, or, or plant, um, to the washing of its fleece, of its hair, um, of its fibers to the spinning to the to the carding and then to the spinning um, to the warping to the weaving to the product and then the product itself the weaving the rug the rag then becoming a material within itself and then using that piece as maybe the warp for something else or maybe the weft for something else I see it all as a cycle and going back to that relationship of birth and rebirth, I think of how does this weaving want to live? How is it sharing its own story with me of its purpose, of its own story, of its own song? And for me, not only does that happen within my process in my studio, but through performance and through having it worn on my body. I've made this active decision as an artist that everything I do has to be activated by my body, um, by carrying, by wearing, by throwing, by um, stepping on, by it stepping on me, by dancing with. I consider every performance or every interaction that I do a dance. I'm one partner, the weaving is another partner. We sometimes step on each other's toes, we sometimes get tangled on upon each other. Sometimes our rhythm is really intact and we're spinning around a space, um, holding each other's hands, trying to throw each other as far as we can. And so I feel like that relationship with, with my work is one of, of intimacy and one that I'm proud to do, um, or that one that I'm proud to, to have as this private, conversation but also to share these conversations publicly and to share these beautiful rituals and ceremonies that we have with each other um, with others and I consider viewership touching audience a collaboration I consider the energy that I receive from others as something that lives within me and is absorbed within me um, my curator that I met before um, when we were having a conversation after one of my performances he mentioned that as he was watching me performed it was this dual aspect of absorb radiate absorb radiate and I feel like that's how I live as a person I absorb so much and I hold so much dear of what I experience that I hope in some ways that the radiation that I want to implement within um, my surroundings and in the spaces that I'm blessed to inhabit is is the absorption of the beauty that I can 
um, access or the beauty that I witness, the beauty that I um, love. And I love, love, love. I love so much that I feel like my work is really based within the idea of of welcome, of washtan. Washtan is one of my favorite Denef words, which means come in. When you hear a relative say washtan, it's they're inviting you into their space. They're inviting you to enjoy what they love. They're inviting you to see and hear and touch and smell the things that they see, hear, touch, and smell. And so in a lot of ways, that's what my work is really embedded within. And so one way that I want to share that is to pass it on. How do I pass this on to, to others? How do I pass it on to my children? And so I gave birth. I gave birth to a son um, last year, 2019, in January. Hello. <laughs> so he's a year old, a year and a half, almost two years old now. Um, he was born out of these ideas. I wanted a figure to hold, to, to pass down stories to grow with me as I learn about the world and as I am told and gifted wisdom, I want to share it with somebody. I want someone to hold that onto me so that way when I come back to that person, they can tell me what I've known, tell me what I've, I've been blessed with. And so I needed him for my my story to continue. I needed him as a reminder of why I do what I do, why I love what I love. And he's done that for me for a year now. I feel like I've been a happier person person um, within this past year. Um, 2020 being a confusing um, part of that as it is for all of us. But having him around and having him um, live with me in this space has been one of, of wholesomeness, of fulfilledness, of fulfilledness, of, of fun. I think my work is fun in a lot of ways. I think I'm childlike in, in nature. I'm naive to a lot of... I'm a naive person, I suppose. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I'm... Um, I view the world through this like childlike lens as a place of always learning, as a place of always wanting to to hear more, wanting to see more. Um, and it's not that I've, I want more from what I've already seen, but I want to feel. And so Hello and I want to take you on a tour of our space. Home, home, home. <laughs> I, where should I begin? Let me introduce you to my family. My grandmother, Shema Sunny Effie. My great grandmother, Shema Bumasane Angela. There's me. Uh, my great grandmother was a weaver. She uh, lived to be over a hundred. She passed in um, the mid two thousands. I got to have a relationship with her as a, a child. Um, she recognized people by their hands. That's how she knew what you did, who you were. She learned about you through um, touching your your fingers and your palms and your your knuckles, and so I feel like that's why I'm so in tune with with what these beautiful, intelligent phalanges can do. I feel like in a lot of ways, my memory lives in my body and that's why I'm a fiber artist. My memory lives in this innate reaction to fiber. As a child, I completely grasped how, how, materials provided wisdom for me. I always wanted to do things and, and touch things and and see how this material interacted with this material, how this fiber got tangled with this fiber. And my hands knew before my mind knew. And I still think that they know before my mind does. I, I feel like sometimes I wish I had little 
little mouse on every one of my fingers so they could explain to you each one telling their own story about what they know versus this guy and so she she blessed our entire family with this beautiful exchange of um, warp and weft and passed that on to, to her daughter my grandmother Effie who taught my my aunties and my mother's how to sew she was a seamstress uh, she made that outfit that she's wearing in that photo and so at a young age my mom passed that down to me how to mend clothes how to create clothes um, I played with dolls as a kid and often made clothes for them and my mom was always wondering as a child, what is he going to do with that? Is he going to be a fashion designer? Is like, what does that mean? And it just ended up meaning that I like the way fabrics touch other fabrics. I like the way fibers um, look upon or, or look when they're laid upon other fibers. And so this body memory that's passed down familial this familial body memory is something that i feel is innate within all of us and going from there um in school i began taking weaving classes i have this very specific memory as a child doing this pink and brown weaving and i'm not sure anymore if that's a memory or a dream that i created reality um, the subconscious thought that became part of my conscience or <laughs> I don't know and I've also talked about it recently and I'm like I wonder if that was also a premonition or a memory of the future um, and possibly maybe that's my last weaving that I'll ever do but in school I um, took many weaving classes and began experimenting with different forms of weaving and embroidery on weaving and weaving with weavings and so these small early weavings done on uh, traditional looms, floor looms, cardboard, um, PVC pipe have been these like early ways that I've um, learned about the relationship between warp and weft. And once I began discovering that in my practice, I felt like this is what I meant to do. This is what my body is telling me that I have to do. I can't not do this for the rest of my life. I have to do this for my entire life. And so they have become these objects now of um, guidance uh, and, and guidance in terms of I follow them as they follow me. I am their angel as they are mine. They have provided me with a path and with a journey and with a destiny in a lot of ways that I have listened to and also succumbed to. <laughs> I have submitted to my fate. After I made the decision to um, interact with everything that I do, to be worn, to be carried, to be thrown, I began creating regalia. And so here in my studio is these large regalia works that sing they have a lot to say that are good dance partners 2020 has prevented me from dancing among others, so they become my homies that I enjoy um, running around with. And like I said, they step on my toes, I step on their toes, but it's all good. <laughs> and so these two weavings um, were part of a show that I did in Santa Fe in 2018 for their Sightlines Biennial. The exhibition was called uh, Casa Tomara, which means house taken over and they became this altar of this history of weaving within my family. Um, my work was called the Yen Hajot Weaving Dance Figure 3 for Na'ashjai Adza, Ritha, Effie, Angela. Ritha, my mom, 
uh, Effie, her mom, Angela, her mom. And it became this totem of matrilineal knowledge, this totem of familial memory, this totem of ancestral power, this totem of holy and sacred being. And that exhibition became this like home base for what I do. It became this womb of knowledge. And I did four performances at Site Santa Fe. And in those four performances, I felt like it was this incubation and embryonic period of passing on knowledge. Knowledge for my mothers and then passing it on to Hello. And from there, I really feel like that basis of, of memory became vital to me. I feel like I'm someone that doesn't have the best memory when it comes to conversation or words, which is strange because I was a linguistic minor <laughs> and I love language and I love the study of how communication happens between um, peoples and between animals and between um, warp and weft. And so for me, I feel like my interest comes from a place of maybe envy or no curiosity. I think it comes from a place of complete curiosity about how we share um, our gifts. And so these dancers needed mothers as I need my mother, as my mother needs her mother as as our house needs their <laughs> their mother how the earth is our own mother and the earth has her mother these angels were born and so each regalia piece is aligned with an angel here's one and here's another um I began thinking of spiders as my angels, as spiders create webs of knowledge and webs of connection. They create cocoons of warmth and cocoons of survival, um, cocoons of death, of, of eating. And they began to represent this place of going back to these pieces of guidance of wandering, of following, of learning with. And so for each angel, there is a body. And with each body, there is a child. And I am the, the listener to all this. <laughs> I am the listener to all this. These are my yarns and fibers that I have purchased, that I have been gifted with, that I have spun and carded myself. I consider access to materials as a vital part of my practice because as I um, live as a, as a young maker, um, discovering and learning and relearning, um, materiality has been one of where we as indigenous peoples learn about ourselves. We learn about ourselves through stories passed down to us. Um, we learn about ourselves through books. We learn about ourselves through the internet. We learn about ourselves through academia. We learn about ourselves through our friends and what our friends kiki about. I consider this all woven together that creates the contemporary indigenous identity. And I don't see that as a hierarchy of one being more authentic or less authentic than the other. It's how we survived and how we need to survive, how our dances and our beliefs and our ceremonies and our language and our languages and our art making was taken from us and banned, outlawed, 
um, destroyed, commodified, appropriated. Where do we learn about this? Where do we learn about ourselves as young people reading trauma um, and like, absorbing trauma all the time? How do we celebrate? How do we, how do we dance together? We dance together by welcoming all these aspects of ourselves. We are not monolithic beings. We are complex, strong, beautiful, curious thinkers. And that became a vital theme and concept of how I wanted to learn about myself. I was blessed with hearing Diné at home as a child. I was blessed with learning Diné in college through classes. I'm blessed with reading about Diné humor through memes on Instagram or Facebook. They become this layered identity about how we exist as peoples and how we continue to exist. Halon, his name is literally translates to what it means to exist. So, for example, you could say, Masse Halon, there is a cat, a cat exists. You can say, Masse Shalon, I own a cat, I have a cat. And so that word and, and the verb stem, Lon, became one of interest to me as I felt like, as a person that exists, I exist amongst ex existence. I exist among other things that exist beside me. Our journeys are both parallel and both um, woven. We both go together and we both separate. We both weave again and then we become unwoven. And those thoughts have um, been the, the basis and the prevalence of why I create and why I make. I'm making a loom right now out of PVC pipe. Um, I started this project um, with all the members of my family um, called A Home For Her. And um, on November 1st, it'll be launched on Settlement dot org i believe this and that project has become a um, collaboration between members of my family um, my mother my father my brother his brother which is me <laughs> my son and uh, my cousins my aunties my grandma um a bunch of us a bunch of us that are going to share weaving what does that mean i don't know um does weaving for us mean working on this loom does weaving for us mean holding hands? Does weaving for us mean I sing a song, you sing a song, we sing over each other and we sing under each other, and then that becomes our weaving. It's for us to figure out as um, individuals. And so that being the basis of where my mind is at right now, I've also been trapped in a way. I have dreams weekly about my childhood house um and so going back to what steve heil inspired me to do as um a third grader fourth grader creating a home out of paper i've become creating my childhood home out of paper as a model um for a large larger project made out of looms and so each one of these being large looms that um, are to scale of my childhood home. And so there's the front door. And you go through and you walk this way. And now you're in the living room. This would have been my room right here. And so the fun thing is this home that I'm recreating is actually right next door 
to where I currently live. So this is the house that I grew up in. That was my home, my little room. This is the bathroom. There's a little front room. My parents' room was back here. And so having dreams about this place weekly and almost being trapped in it, I feel like this, this place has become one of, of anger, maybe, of confusion, of delight, of every emotion that is possible. Um, so having dreams in that house weekly and having this strong, like, embedded memory with the land and embedded memory within those walls has been one that I've been wanting and have been needing to both create and destroy. <laughs> to both birth again and to to die with <laughs> and i want to create a little outline and model so that my dreams can not only exist there but now exist here and to invite others into those spaces um beautiful spaces with family members that are no longer here family members that um, are still here with myself because I feel like um, one of the most intimate gestures I feel as a maker is to carry to be carried to carry for another to carry each other I feel like that word within itself has so many connotations of caring to carry is to care and i feel like an innate way of doing that is through baskets through weaving this is a basket that i um, just finished weaving that i want to have as a space of how we as bodies how we as bodies continue as we as bodies help as we as bodies listen as we as bodies share I feel like that word carry embodies all of those sentiments to carry someone's groceries when they can't carry all their bags inside um, I'm a server as a server at a restaurant to carry someone's food to them from the kitchen to their table as a place of nourishment, as a place of of celebration. We all love to eat together. Eating is great. <laughs> and that sentiment to me, alongside body memory, has been one of where my mind currently inhabits. Um, not only for my own mental health, but to... I feel like caring and and memory directly align with hajot. Hajot being the Dine philosophy of goodness, balance, harmony, well-being, caring, love, beauty, celebration, dance, fun, party. <laughs> uh, not only in um, our physical experience and existence but in our spiritual lives and is born out of our hairs out of our fibers <laughs> i go back to to fiber a lot i have been collecting i've been collecting my hair for the past couple years and I feel like this holds everything I need to know. Everything that I've ever learned is right here. And 
and everything I've ever learned is right here. This is where my my mind is. So sometimes words that come out of my mouth I feel might dilute what I think. But this doesn't. This doesn't. This doesn't. This doesn't. They know everything. They know everything I've ever need to know. Ever needed to know. And so I just listen. I'm a listener and I'm a follower. I follow I follow what needs to be listened. <laughs> I follow what wants to be shared. I follow what wants to be gifted. And in that, I... I make I make what, what is shared. And so... That passion of... Of always wanting to create comes from a place of always wanting to experience and to exist. I think that blessing in itself is what allows me to know you, to know you. These are my children. Do you want a kiss? They get, they fight sometimes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I think that's. That's what I want to share right now. That's what's on my mind right now. If I did this talk tomorrow, I probably would have said a hundred billion different things, but it probably was going to mean the exact same thing, <laughs> which is perfect. Everything is perfect, I guess. No, not really. And to end, I've always felt like art and education go hand in hand because we are not teachers of art. We are students of material. That's one thing that I thought one night I was making. And I had a, um, like a workshop that I was doing like the next day. And I was like, why am I in this position of teaching art? Why am I in this position of being a knower of art? I'm like, I'm not a knower of art. I am a student of art. I am a student of material. And from that, I've I've always considered the material our teacher and the objects our teacher and the combs our teacher. This is where we learn. This is our, our power. Us? Mm-mm. Just kidding. <laughs> but uh, I... I've always felt that um, these objects hold the knowledge that we need to know. And so having a platform like this, the place of, of guidance that I can possibly offer in any way is one, we are students to the material, all of us, and the material is our teacher, and two, make art every day. I think as artists, we should make art every day. If you don't feel like making art, maybe that's the art within itself, but we should make as much as we can and to take up as much space as we can. And with that, I say thank you. I say I love you. I say I welcome you into my home and thank you for welcoming me onto your screen and bye